Welcome, and thank you for tuning in. You're listening to the Beyond 50 Radio Program. I'm Daniel Davis. On the program today, we're going to be talking about something that most of us try to embrace but find difficult to follow through with, and that is the kind of profound change that we would like to see in our lives for improvement. After all, whenever we set forward with a goal and we find things just don't work out the way we would like them to, well, we either get discouraged or we just give up entirely. Well, on the program today, we're going to be sharing a little bit of Christian science with you folks to find out just exactly how this can happen and to pay attention to things that have the life-changing power that can come to healing with results of understanding the oneness with God itself. These ideas have been useful to our guests in the healing work that they do, and they love sharing them in places such as prison ministry with interfaith groups and the public talks that she gives as well in Christian science. I'd like to welcome to the Beyond 50 radio program today. Someone is going to be talking with us about how to make change for the better, Janet Hegarty. Janet, thank you for being on the program today. Oh, hello, Daniel. Thank you so much for having me. I, I love to share these wonderful ideas that have been so helpful to me, and I appreciate you giving me the opportunity to share that with your listeners. Well, absolutely. Now, how did all this begin for you? Well, when I was um, finished with college, I started to um, try to set up my professional life. And, you know, at that time in everyone's lives, it, it seems very serious and all very new. But I was really floundering. I, I really had a desire to do good and to be successful. But I felt like I didn't have anything to base my hopes on. You know, on the, on the surface, I looked good. I had a good degree from a good university. And, um, you know, I was ready and willing to, to work hard. But inside, I really didn't feel secure at all. It's kind of like a, a house I once saw in an advertisement. It was a house for sale. And the house was just really beautiful. Uh, everything had been redecorated, and, and uh, it was just glorious until I came across one of the pictures on the Internet where I was looking at the ad, and there was a room that was completely in the shambles. And as I studied the photo, I started to suspect that there was maybe some sort of a structural issue. And it ended up that, in fact, there was. And the structural issue had not been addressed. They removed a load-bearing wall, and they hadn't properly supported it. So even though this house was absolutely picture perfect, on the surface, the one side of the house was leaning distinctly if you looked at it from the outside. And, and this was, was what I felt like. And if you think about that house, until they addressed the structural issues that are involved, that house wasn't going to be fit for anyone to live in. And so I was feeling that way when I graduated from college. And I really made you know my effort to to find work and, and to find some sort of a sense of security, but it just wasn't happening until a friend of mine gave me a magazine, which was the Christian Science Sentinel. It's a magazine that's made up of articles that are written by people just like you and I who have applied the ideas of Christian science to their daily life, to their challenges, and found healing. And this particular article was about a physical healing that related to uh, problems of uh, digestion that this person was having. Well, it was fascinating to me because the article was about two pages long. I got about two-thirds of the way through it, and there hadn't been anything about the physical body or about types of food to eat or about bodily organs. It, it had talked about the nature of God the entire time and about our relationship to God. And what that article was saying was so very important to me because it was saying that God is all good and almighty 
and is also the source of our being. And I had a little knowledge of the Bible at that time, and so I, you know, I had a concept of God being almighty. But I had never really thought about God as being only good, you know, not just a little bit good, or not like a big man in the sky that's sometimes good and sometimes not, which is basically my understanding of God before I read this article. And this idea that God was only good and that that was the source of my being just really revolutionized my thinking about who I was. It provided for me a solid foundation and a good structure, just like what that house I was telling you about needed. It, it went really deep into my fundamental understanding of who I was and it gave me an expanded awareness of the power of goodness that's at work in all of our lives. And this really gave me security, and it gave me great traction to start my career and to um, really expand everything that, that I was doing at the time. Sounds like quite a journey. (laughs) <laughs> yes, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Now, let's talk about the uh, talk that you're going to be giving here soon about how to make change for the better. What exactly do you specifically let people know about? Well, I will be talking about four big ideas that are based on Christian science, and they're explained in depth in the book Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures, written by Mary Baker Eddy, who is the founder of Christian Science. Um, in, in the talk, I introduce these ideas as a platform on which we can um, bring the strength and security to our lives and affect real changes. You know, people are looking for all kinds of change in their lives today. They may feel like the world has changed around them and that they need to have a fresh start in their life. Or they might want to expand the contributions that they're making to the world by improving their skills or learning new ones. But they may not feel enough security in their ability to move forward with this. Other people may be wondering how they can improve their health or increase the happiness that they enjoy in their lives. And so in the talk, I will be addressing all of these kinds of changes by putting forth these ideas, these four big ideas from Christian science that serve to provide a solid basis or foundation that anyone can work from to make real and substantial positive changes in their lives. Now, what kind of changes have you seen people be able to make, and what was the process uh, in which they engaged that? Well, I can talk first about changes in my own life. Uh, One very dramatic change that took place one day uh, actually was a physical healing. And and all of these ideas that I will share are both for our careers and our families and and also they relate to our physical well-being. Before I share that, I'd I'd like to mention a little bit more about Mary Baker Eddy, who is the discoverer of Christian science. It's not something that she created or thought up. It It is what she discovered through her life experiences, and through her study of the Bible. She was searching for change for herself for many, many years. She had suffered from ill health, and her situation came to a crisis when she was in an accident, and she was told that the injuries that she had sustained were life-threatening. And just like she had always done through her life, she turned to her Bible and and she had found over the years there 
comfort and guidance. Well, this particular day, she needed something much more than just comfort and guidance. And what she found when she opened the Bible were healings that Christ Jesus had performed. And these healings were immediate. And they were effective, and they were done without any material components. There, there weren't any operations or medicines involved in the healings that Jesus did. Well, as she was reading these healings and, and contemplating them, she got a new sense of God, Spirit, as the only reality. And this idea that God was reality has flooded her thought that day, and she was actually healed of all of the difficulties from the accident immediately as she pondered those ideas from the Bible where she wanted to understand what had happened. It was wonderful, and she was very, very grateful to be well, but she had longed throughout her whole life to relieve the suffering of humanity. And here she had just experienced this wonderful healing herself. So she went to her Bible and she studied the Bible to try to understand this nature of reality of God better. And she found things in the Bible that were very clear rules. She was taking a new perspective. She had read the Bible many times, but this, this idea that what Jesus was presenting was that God is the reality of all being, the governing power behind all existence. And as she studied, she began to do healings of other people on the same basis through an acknowledgement of God's goodness and God's all power. Well, this one day, I came in a, suddenly in, into a very difficult situation. I had been out to dinner with a group of people, and we, we had a nice dinner, and the meal was over. Well, I live in Missouri, and in Missouri, we sometimes get ice storms. It'll the, the start raining right when it's freezing temperature. And this ice will just can cover everything so thoroughly that you don't even see that it's there. And, and this evening, when this happened, while we were eating, the ice covered all of the ground. And so when I left the restaurant that night, I didn't know that I was really walking out on a pure sheet of ice. And neither did anyone else. I came out of the door with a group of people, and we all went flying. And we ended up in a pile, and I was at the bottom of the pile, and my arm was underneath me there on the bottom of the pile. Well, this was quite a surprise to me because uh, it was unexpected. I thought I was going to have a, a simple drive home and, and a quiet evening, but suddenly everything had changed. Well, we helped one another get up off of the ice and I waddled to my car and realized that my arm that had been at the bottom of the pile of people was really feeling very painful. I had a 45 minute drive that I needed to do to get home on the ice <laughs> because the ice had covered everything. And so I contacted another family member and, and asked that she would pray along with me as I was driving because I was very concerned about my arm and not sure what condition it was in, but it didn't seem to be in a good condition at all. And as, and as I drove, I thought about these ideas that Mary Baker Eddy had discovered about God being all in all. And, and on that basis, you know, I, I denied that I could have been separated from God or that there could be anything in my arm that was separated from where it should be. But that because 
God and God's goodness is the reality of being, I was safe, and my arm, though it didn't feel like it at the time, was in a good, sound state, just like it had been before I came out of the door of that restaurant and, and ended up at the bottom of the pile of people. Well, as I drove this 45-minute drive home, I could feel the arm improving. I could feel that things seemed to be shifting around very, very gently in the arm, and the pain was lessening. I continued to pray. I continued to to think about the power of God and how that power has everything to do with us, that we're part of the wonderful creation that God has made. By the time I arrived home, my arm was feeling very normal. Everything was working normally. And I uh, let my relative who was praying with me know that, and was, I was very grateful for that. But I, I was just grateful to see the, the power of this truth that God is all good and is the only power, and that's the reality of our being. So even when it looks like things aren't going well, which was the case that night, we can rely on this truth and embrace it in our prayer, and good physical healing comes as a result of that. Now, it's also interesting to note, too, that even when things aren't going good, that's a good thing, too, isn't it? That when things aren't going good? Yeah, because a lot of times people think, oh, you know, uh, things seem to be working against me. But the fact is, is a lot of times when things aren't going so good, it's actually a good thing. You just don't see it yet. Well, I would say that it's it's good in, in my experience from the sense that it makes me stand up and stand firm for the power of God, the power of divine love is another name for God, the power of spirit. These are all names that express the nature of God. And when things don't look like they're, they're going well, I make a stand, a mental stand that you know, God is governing and he is making all things work together for good. And, and this is something, I, I think what you may be getting at, Daniel, is sometimes things can look bad, but in the end they turn out well. <laughs> and, and I have had experiences like that too. I remember um, having a, a disappointment one time in my career, and it, it seemed like a very big disappointment, and I couldn't understand why things hadn't worked out the way that I had expected them to be. And, and, in, and in that situation, what I did was I really humbly, it took, me, it took me some time really to get over this disappointment, but I would, I would reach out to God in my prayers, and, and I would ask God to show me, you know, just what I needed to know, what I, what I could do to um, serve him better, uh, what his purpose was for me, because this this disappointment had seemed like you know a real step of progress for me, but then it didn't end up happening, and so it was a time to to really um, draw closer to God and and to learn more about about God's perception of who we are, God being the creator of all of us, he loves us. God loves me and he loves you because he made us and he loves the way he made us. Sometimes we may not be fully expressing what God has done in us in our lives. We may still be learning who we are. But all along, God is loving our real nature. 
And and this love comes to our human consciousness as as uplifting or practical ideas that tend to move us forward in our lives. And what that circumstance did when I had this disappointment was it it helped me to become stronger in my conviction of what I had learned in Christian science. It it helped me to to learn to uh, work more systematically, uh, to love more fully, and and to really deepen my demonstration of what God's concept of, of who I am is. So it was a very strengthening experience, uh, even though initially it was disappointing. Uh, later on, I had a different opportunity that came to me in my career, and it was really it was it was clearly the right opportunity for me, and it was uh, perhaps even a better opportunity than the one that I had missed the first time around. So I agree. Yes, <laughs> bad things can be good things. But if we're always turning in our thought to seeing what God sees and what God knows about how he made us and, and how he made the world around us, we always continue to grow and see the, the next inspired step that God has planned for us. Now, how often have you seen people uh, heal, like within your practice, uh, you know, as, a, as an effort through prayer and intention? Well, all of the prayer is made for the purpose of bringing healing. Sometimes that healing is, is emotional healing, things of, like difficulties with a marriage, um, most of the time it, it's physical healing. And I have been grateful to see um, many healings over the years uh, through my practice of Christian science. One of the things that, about the practices is that all of the work that we do is confidential. So if someone calls, whether it's a physical problem they're calling about or, or whether it's some sort of an emotional emotional situation or a financial situation, they can rest assured when they're talking to a Christian science practitioner that what they are sharing doesn't um, get spread around. No one, no one will hear about it but the practitioner and God. And so I, don't, uh, I can't say that I have a published list of healings that I've done, but I can share... Um, healings that I have had myself and healings that we've had in the family. Um, there was the healing that I shared about the, the uh, difficulty with my arm, the pa- painful situation there. Uh, there was another time when I was about to go on a uh, weeks-long camping trip. It was going to be uh, a somewhat rugged situation, and... A couple of days before, I woke up with a really awful pain in my side to the extent that if I tried to get out of bed, I was totally dizzy and just felt like better sit back down. And that was something I, I don't know how a medical profession would define that. But I do know this, that uh, after praying for about 24 hours, that pain left, and the following day, I was off on the camping trip and, and had no further difficulty with that whatsoever. Um, we've, we've overcome in our family financial challenges in most interesting ways. God has many ways to provide for us. Um, we've had a child, childbirth. I relied on uh, Christian science and the help of a Christian science nurse for childbirth. In in that uh, situation, um, 
the state that I was in also required that a medical doctor would have some observational uh, part in the birth, and so we did uh, enlist a doctor to do that. And, um, and that was a wonderful experience because I was able to have the, the children born at home and without any um, medication or intrusion from the world. It was just a, a sweet time of, of considering what God was really doing. You know, that God was, God was manifesting his power in my life with my husband and I, and, and that was expanding, <laughs> and that we, we would have more, more family. And it was all uh, harmonious and, and uh, a beautiful experience in both cases. Well, that's very exciting. I can imagine, too, that this could also create the possibility for change in the world as a whole. Do you see that happening? Absolutely. One of the uh, points that is so important and was so helpful to me when I was uh, learning the fundamentals of Christian science is the idea that existence is not a conflict between good and evil. And, and that was what I had been previously led to believe. But that it really is always the unfolding of God's goodness. The Bible explains that in the, in the first chapter of Genesis, it explains that God is the source of all existence. And it says that he made man and woman in his image and likeness. So you could say that God is the, the governing principle, the power behind all creation. And because Jesus showed us that God is all good and is only love, that means that the power that governs all creation and all people is only good. So the outcome of that kind of government can only be goodness. And this was very helpful to me because I had had the misperception that God made both good and evil. And, and I think that's a common, a common thought. And many people, even who are not religious, think of the world as being, you know, this twofold thing, good and, good and evil, good and bad. We might have good genes or we might have bad genes. You know, some people have and some people don't. So to find out that the power was only behind the goodness really helped me to get a solid footing because it helped me to realize that I could know from the beginning that my life as it proceeded into adulthood and my profession was going to be good and that it was going to be successful and bring a positive good into the world. Now, the, of course, if you look at the world as a whole, you kind of wonder, well, if God is all good and the only power and the principle that is governing one and all, why do we see this bad stuff? And if anyone is honest, they have to say we do see bad stuff. And sometimes in our individual lives and, and in the world at large, we hear, hear about a lot of things that don't fit with the nature of an all good God. But those things that we see that are bad things, they proceed really from false concepts of God, from fear, really a considerable uh, fear there is in the world, fear that the world is twofold, good and evil, fear that we as individuals might be good and evil. This fear and an ignorance of God, of this principle that governs, is what is behind the bad things that we see in the world. But as we pray for the world and affirm that God, who is the principle behind all and who is love, is upholding and empowering goodness in everyone, 
we help the whole world, you know, to feel this goodness and to um, move forward from this basis. Because if you think about it, fear and ignorance, which is really always what's behind any kind of evil doing, is not powerful. To be fearful is, is not to be powerful. And to be ignorant is not to be powerful. So while, while we haven't seen the final um, proof that evil is not real, we can, day by day, in our thinking, stand firm that only the goodness of God and the power of God is really doing anything. You know, the, there's only one power, not two, and that power is God and its goodness. I had a, a experience myself one night where I thought someone was breaking into something in the neighborhood, and I heard this noise. It was very late at night, and this made me afraid, but it also made me alert that I should start praying because I I realized that God never created anyone to be a thief, but that just wasn't a part of his creation. And as I prayed and considered that, I realized that if someone thought they were a thief and they were, they were making a mistake and feeling something, that God was still seeing them as he made them. He was still seeing them as the honest, intelligent, good man or woman or child that he had created. And his love of that goodness in them was in fact even right at that moment supporting that good in them and encouraging them (laughs) to change their course to make a better choice. And as I contemplated that, the thought came to me, well, what what would God say to someone who had made a mistake and was feeling something? And the thought that came to me was, well, God would tell them to, you know, put those things down and and go home and and I will give you better ideas. But God would be moving on their thought with what was right and good because God is the principle of who we are and he he, God's design is that we will all understand our inherent goodness and our purpose and the power to do right that's within us well the next day I went out of the house and I'd kind of forgotten about my prayers in the night, but a neighbor uh, came over to the house and she she wanted to talk to me. She was very animated. She said that the garage next to her home had been broken into the night before. And I said, oh dear, I'm, I'm so sorry to hear that. And I was remembering my prayers in the back of my thought. And she said, oh no, that's not all. I said, oh really? Well, what else happened? And she said, well, strangely, everything that they took from the garage was just dropped on the front lawn of a home a few houses away. Just left there. Every single item that had been taken was accounted for. And I was deeply moved by this because I... I had thought for one thing when I was praying the night before, if God would only think of a person who was a thief and who was in the act of stealing something as as making a mistake, that he surely would love me and help me when I make mistakes. And I thought that those prayers because after that initial noise I heard, I hadn't heard anything else that night. Um, I was impressed by how those prayers had gone out. You know, I was changing my thought. I was realizing there are no thieves in God's creation, and I was realizing that God's love is, 
is really big. You know, it it forgives our shortcomings and and helps us to correct and to do right. And so I was being changed by that. But clearly, from what my neighbor told me about all of those tools and other items from the garage that had been stolen that were just left there and everything being accounted for, that uplifted spiritual thought that was coming to me was really going out into the neighborhood. And I'm positive that whoever that was who had been there in that garage that night, that their life was changed for the better because they had been touched by that same love and inspired with a better idea and and freed from, you know, the danger of the situation they were putting themselves into. So, Daniel, that's a long answer to your question. Well, it certainly covers all the bases, that's for (laughs) sure. And I know people can enjoy your talk. Where is a website they can find out about these talks and, uh, you know, things like that? The, the website that they can look at is P as in Peter, D as in dog, X, C S for Christian Science, lecture, lecture series, C-V-X, C-S, lecture series dot com. And well, very good. First, the first lecture that I'll give will be on Thursday. March 7th at 7 p.m. at the um, Native American Student Center gotcha. on Southwest Jackson. So. Well, thank you so much for being on the Beyond 50 radio program today and sharing these insights with our listeners. It's been a pleasure. Well, thank you so much, Daniel. I'm very grateful for what you do there at Beyond 50 radio. It's really well, Thank you very much. You're welcome. Bye-bye. We want to thank you, the listeners out there, for joining us. Discover more at beyond50radio.com. That is the number 50. We do encourage you to sign up for our weekly e-newsletter. Keep up to date with what's going on in the world of Beyond 50 as well as our upcoming shows. I'm Daniel Davis. Thank you for joining us. This is the Beyond 50 Radio program. And remember, live your day past halfway. Halfway.